Solid State Battery Company, Solid Power, just took a really important step towards commercializing their new ultra fast charging, high silicon anode solid state EV battery with their new EV cell pilot line. Let's talk about Solid Power's new battery technology, their progress towards commercialization, and discuss why their solid state battery tech looks very promising. I'm John, and welcome to Cleaner Watt. If you've been paying attention to battery technology, I mean, when you think about it for a minute, it's really difficult to find another industry that has as much hype and empty promises as the battery tech industry. It seems like every time you turn around, there's another battery breakthrough or some other new technology that just really promises to be the next big thing. But the reality of most of these breakthroughs is that they never actually see the light of day and never get commercialized. Waiting through all this hype to find the real battery breakthroughs can be difficult. However, as I've been reading more and more about Solid Power's new high silicon anode solid state battery technology, I've been very impressed and this technology looks very promising and I believe it's worth keeping an eye on. Now, while Solid Power is indeed developing more traditional solid state batteries with lithium metal anodes, their new what they call silicon EV cell, which is an all solid state battery with a 50% plus silicon based anode, is further along in development than the lithium metal anode cell. And as they mentioned in a recent press release, Solid Power does have plans to deliver these cells to their automotive partners Ford and BMW for automotive qualification testing by the end of the year. Now, when it comes to just how impressive these silicon EV cells um, may end up being, here are some of the stats that Solid Power is aiming for. On Solid Power's website, they mentioned that they are targeting these new silicon based anode EV cells to have a cell level gravimetric energy density somewhere around 390 watt hours per kilogram, a cell level volumetric energy density somewhere around 930 watt hours per liter, and a 10% to 90% fast charge time of less than 15 minutes. In addition, solid power is aiming for these new high silicon anode uh, solid state batteries to have a good cycle life, and they mentioned somewhere over a thousand cycles for the cycle life of these new battery cells, which when you know anything about how silicon uh, acts in a battery cell and battery anodes, if they're able to achieve this, this will be really impressive. We do know according to this June 6 solid power press release that these new all solid state battery cells have over 50% active silicon in the anode. Now the energy density numbers that I just mentioned, those are at the cell level, which is an important metric, um, but obviously the more important metric is the pack level energy density. We don't yet have that data for solid powers technology. Hopefully we'll have that in the coming years. But when it comes to cell level energy density, here's how uh, these battery cells compare to Tesla's 2170 battery technology, for instance. As you can see on this chart, when it comes to gravimetric, which is um, energy density as compared to weight and volumetric, which is energy density as compared to volume, these new solid state batteries from solid power do promise a huge improvement over current battery technology. And if they're able to indeed achieve a cycle life of over a thousand cycles, plus uh, quick charging less than 15 minutes from 10 to 90%, that will also be a huge improvement over current battery tech. Now, moving back to the problem with silicon in the anode, if you've watched very many of my past videos, you know that adding a bunch of silicon to a battery anode, while it does improve the charging speed and the energy density of a battery, it also comes with a side problem, and that problem is volume expansion, which often leads to short battery cycle life. Tesla's current 2170 batteries, as I mentioned in that chart a minute ago, are designed to last somewhere around 1500 cycles, and that's according to an April 2019 Elon Musk tweet. But these 2170 battery cells, even with a recent boost in energy density that likely came from adding more silicon to the anode, these 2170 batteries still likely contain low single digit percentages of silicon in their carbon based anodes. It is important to note that Tesla is working to um, improve the energy density by adding more silicon to their 4680 battery technology, as they mentioned at battery day, but it's unclear how much silicon that they hope to add to these batteries. 
If solid power is able to commercialize a solid state battery that can charge in 15 minutes and last over 1000 cycles with a 50% plus silicon anode, this will be quite a breakthrough. Now, as exciting as this new technology from solid power is, it is important to note that it's not quite ready for prime time. In Solid Power's October 2021 Analyst Day presentation, they shared the following cycle life results for their new silicon EV cells. As you can see on this chart, at room temperature, this high silicon content EV cell was able to achieve over 1,000 cycles and still maintain 82% of its capacity on average. However, it's important to dive a little deeper into this data, and in all reality, there are a few caveats to this data. First of all, it's important to note that as they mentioned here, this is a coin pouch cell, a very small cell, not a larger pouch cell, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Also note that they mentioned that the charge discharge rate here is for C slash five, which is equivalent to a 0.2 C charging rate, which basically means that they're charging this battery in five hours. So charging a battery in five hours is definitely not a DC fast charge. This is definitely a slower charge. Solid Power also shared some data for another coin pouch cell with high silicon in the anode. And even at 45 degrees Celsius or 113 degrees Fahrenheit, they were still able to have an 80% capacity retention after 750 cycles at that same charge rate. In that same October of 21 analyst presentation, they also shared data for a larger pouch cell, one that had um, a size of around 270 milliamp hours. And once again, at that same charge rate, they were able to have an 85% capacity retention through the first 400 cycles. And according to their test at this time, they were still testing this further. As you can see here, that, that was iteration number one that we mentioned a minute ago, but this chart shows, in addition, iteration number two, version two of this cell, a 265 milliamp hour pouch cell, and you can see that they appear to be um, showing an improvement over those results for iteration number two. Now, I'm glad to see that they're seeing some promising results for their cycle life test of these battery cells. However, the charging rates at which they were testing that cycle life were somewhat low. What's going to be the real test is when they do some fast charging at rates around 4C or 5C that are going to be necessary for the um, less than 15 minute charging that they mention. Um, because when it comes to fast charging, that's what really puts stress on a battery. And uh, if you can do fast charging and long cycle life, that's really um, what you need. I don't have any data from solid power when it comes to uh, the cycle life, when it comes to fast charging. However, based on recent comments from solid power CEO in May of this year at their virtual battery day event, fast charging and discharging these batteries at room temperature is still a limiting factor and is something they're working to solve. So basically what we have here is they're able to charge these batteries from a 10% to 90% state of charge in less than 15 minutes. That's what they're aiming for and apparently they've been able to hit that. However, to be able to do that and have over 1000 um, cycles and maintain a good cycle life of these batteries, they're apparently not able to do both at the same time right now at room temperature. This is what they're working to solve. However, they've solved a lot of other problems in the past and they've come a long way and they're actually getting pretty close when it comes to solid state battery technology to actually having a very viable solid state battery that they'll be able to introduce to the market. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. And I have a lot of confidence in solid power that they're going to be able to solve this problem and deliver a battery that truly can charge fast and last a long time. Now, when it comes to their plans for commercialization of these new solid state battery cells, as Solid Power mentions in this June 6 press release, they have completed installation of their pilot production line that they're calling their EV cell pilot line. And they mention it's designed to produce EV scale solid state battery cells. They also mentioned that after internal testing of cells produced by this pilot line. They're going to send some batteries over to their automotive partners, BMW and Ford, and start their automotive qualification testing. And that's planned for the end of the year. This press release also talked a little bit about what they're aiming for when it comes to capacity, what this pilot line will be able to put out when it comes to number of 
battery cells when it's fully operational and fully ramped up. And they mentioned, quote, when running at full capacity, Solid Power's EV cell pilot line is expected to be capable of producing 300 cells per week or approximately 15,000 cells per year, with the majority of those being planned for automotive qualification testing. They also mentioned that, quote, Solid Power expects to be able to optimize its silicon EV cells for capacities ranging from 60 to 100 amp hours. Now, I'd like to put those numbers in context a little bit. Anytime you talk about outputs and battery sizes, I think it's really important to put that in context. Um, for instance, let's talk about the 100 amp hour, up to 100 amp hour battery cells that they hope to produce from this pilot line. According to this Torque News article, the Model Y battery pack, which has an approximately 82 kilowatt hour battery pack, is made up of 4,416 2170 cells, which are each rated at around 4.8 amp hours or 4,800 milliamp hours each. A 100 amp hour battery cell like Solid Power is working to develop is equivalent to just over 20 of Tesla's 2170 cells. And based on my estimations, it would take approximately 212 of these 100 amp hour cells to match the capacity of the Model Y's battery pack. If this pilot line is able to make 15,000 cells per year fully ramped, that would be enough for around 70 or 71 Model Ys. Now that is kind of a small amount, but remember this is just a pilot line to prove out the process. And in addition, during Solid Power's recent virtual battery day, which happened May 26th, of this year, their CEO, Doug Campbell, made it very clear that Solid Power does not want to be a mass production battery manufacturer to compete with the existing large battery companies, but rather they plan to work with partners like they're currently working with Ford and BMW, for instance, to manufacture through joint ventures and or to license their technology to other manufacturers. So there's really no need for this pilot line to be much larger than it is because it's really just for qualification and proving out this technology. Then they can send those battery cells to their automotive partners or their joint venture partners, whoever that may be in the future in addition to their current partners. And um, they can work with them to uh, produce these batteries. So they're not going to have to set up a huge gigafactories to produce these batteries. They just need to prove out the technology. Do note that Solid Power is working on becoming a leader when it comes to the uh, solid sulfide-based electrolytes that they're using in their batteries. And Solid Power mentions on their website that quote, we expect to scale electrolyte production to power 800,000 electrified vehicles using our all solid state battery cells annually by 2028. Now, as I mentioned earlier, beyond just the high silicon anode EV battery that we've mainly been talking about, uh, Solid Power is also working on lithium metal anode batteries as well, and also a conversion type cathode battery with a lithium metal anode. As they mentioned on their website, they're aiming for this new lithium metal anode battery to have a gravimetric energy density around 440 watts per kilogram. Once again, a volumetric energy density around 930 watt hours per liter, a cycle life over 1000 again, and they're aiming for a 10% to 90% state of charge in less than 20 minutes. In addition, they plan to take this lithium metal anode um, battery technology to the next generation with new cathode materials because the lithium metal anode battery that we're talking about here still has a traditional uh, nickel manganese cobalt cathode but in the future, they hope to produce a conversion reaction cathode cell. And for this conversion reaction solid state battery cell, they're aiming for a gravimetric energy density number around 560 watt hours per kilogram. Once again, when you take a look at how this compares to Tesla's 2170 cells and the estimates I have for those when it comes to gravimetric, volumetric energy densities, and also cycle life and 10 to 90% charging times, you can see that this new battery technology looks very promising. Now in Solid Power's December of 2021 investor presentation, they had a chart here that showed when they plan to actually start production of these battery cells with their um, commercialization partners, as we mentioned, working with like Ford, BMW, and maybe others in the future. And as you can see at that time, they were actually aiming for commercializing these battery cells with their battery partners in just a few years. Nevertheless, it does seem like Solid Power is making some great steps when it comes to actually commercializing these uh, solid state batteries and seeing them in an actual electric vehicle. 
And they also have a big differentiator over some other companies that I've looked at, and that is the actual um, manufacturability of their battery cells. Once again, going back to Solid Power's investor presentation from December of 2021, in that presentation, they showed that the process of producing these solid state batteries is very similar to the current production process of a standard lithium ion battery. But as they show here, there are a number of steps that are not needed with these new solid state batteries that are necessary with traditional lithium ion batteries. So it appears like existing production lines for battery companies can be easily transitioned over to this new technology. And in addition, some of the processes can actually be removed, making these batteries potentially cheaper in the future. So in conclusion, while we are still a few years away from seeing Solid Power's new solid state battery technology in an electric vehicle, they are making steady progress and it appears likely that we will see this new battery technology in production electric vehicles, possibly from Ford and BMW sometime around 2027. If solid power can indeed deliver on these promises, this may just be the battery technology breakthrough that I've been waiting for. Do let me know what you think about this technology in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. I'd like to take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the description below. Thank you so much.